Today we're going to an update on the Alcatronic. What's going on guys? Devin with Reef Dudes. I've had a ton of people asking me for an update on the Alcatronic. It's been a month and a bit, month and a half maybe since I did a video on it. So I feel like it's time for a good update on it. Uh, lots of people are asking how am I like it, how's it been doing on the tank. Um, so let's kind of dig into that. Uh, first off, not having to test all the time is a beautiful thing. I currently have it set up just to monitor only. Uh, eventually I'll probably try and let it dose for me, but so far I've been just trying to let it do its thing, monitor and just tweak my dosing from there. Part of it is I'm doing a tank upgrade soon, so I don't want to get too crazy with it. If I put this on, if you had a frag system or something where you're constantly putting stuff in and taking it out, letting it manage your dosing for you would be a huge lifesaver because your tank keep it very stable because stuff's always fluctuating. Um, so if you guys want to just take a quick peek inside, so how this actually works is, is it sucks out water from your tank, it puts it in a little test file, uh, there's a pH probe in there, and a little magnetic stir, and it will slowly add the reagents until it gets whatever value it's looking for, and then it can figure out what your alkalinity is. Um, some people do put the wastewater back into the tank. Uh, currently, I just have it going to this one gallon space saver container in the back, and that's been working pretty well for me. Um, they did update the app recently, so I actually got a little pop-up telling me what my last reading was. All right, guys, so if we open up the app, you can kind of, takes a couple seconds to load and it loads all the data. It pulls it from the machine through Bluetooth and you're gonna see your last round of testing. So if I look at the back of it, so my last test was 9.35. And if we look at the history, you can see all the tests is done. So right now every 12 hours is testing. Now if you unplug it and plug it back in, that kind of determines your test time. It's from when it powers up. So if you wanna change it, just literally replug it in. Um, so we can see, so mine's been hovering pretty darn stable around the 9 point, so the lowest is 9.24, the highest is 9.35. Oh, one for 9.49. So it does kind of jump around in there. Now if you guys are actually dosing, I have this setting turned off for now, but there's one called, so action mode is if it's actually dosing and feeding your tank. Uh, washout mode. Washout mode is used for if it detects something and it's more than 0.2 of a variance, it will be like, okay, is this real or is this an error? And it will retest. So if you are dosing, definitely use that one. Another thing I learned is if you reset the unit, that will default itself to back on. So if you're only testing, you could turn that one off or leave it on if you want to make double check your test, make sure it's super accurate. Now, another really cool thing that you can do with it. If you guys are running an aquarium controller, there is a second BNC port on the side of this. And I actually plugged this into the Apex. Um, now, if on the e coral, if I had it on the nano tank, I can do the same thing, hook it up to the e coral. That way, when you pull open your other app, you can see all your settings in one place, which is kind of a nice feature. Uh, the other thing is, too, every month or so, it will want you to recalibrate the pumps. I just had mine popping up reminding me the other day, so it's something on my to do list for today. So it's good to do every once in a while just to make sure your test results are actually very accurate. Now, one of the biggest things that are useful or reason to have one of these. If stuff changes in your tank, if you're not test, well one, just because you'd be lazy not test all the time, which is always nice. But if something changes in your tank, you don't necessarily know about it unless you're testing. Um, like I had a acro that RTN'd on me not too long ago. And also I saw a big change in my alkalinity was climbing all of a sudden. So because I lost um, a big stag in my tank, it's not consuming that big chunk of alkalinity. So by seeing these graphs, also and seeing a little trending down, I knew I had to change my dosing by a few mil. And then if I didn't notice that, if I just left it for a while, it would have slowly kept going down and down and down or up and up and up, right? So if something changes in your tank, it's a good way to look at the trend line. So the trend lines currently for me are one of the biggest things. When I do my tank upgrade, I'm going to go be going back to a calcium reactor for a while. And having this testing constantly is going to make it so easy to tune it. Um, you see one little thing, you're like, oh, a little more flow. It's going to be really cool. So I think that is a really awesome feature for it. And I was also debating too, if I had turned into a frag tank one day, having this on it would be amazing just to keep up those fluctuations. Um, now the one really cool thing is I know a lot of people use their own aquarium controllers. So just wanna show you guys this one. So I launched Apex Fusion. And at the top of my dashboard, I have my alkalinity. So you can see it tests every 12 hours if I click into it. You can see there's my test up and down, up and down. So every 12 hours is my test. So 9.2, the one before it was 9.4, 9.3, 9.5, 9.3. So I mean, it's pretty stable overall. I generally like it closer to eight and a half. So I probably should drop it down a little bit. It's creeped up a bit since that one acro dab. Uh, you can see the big dip. I think I had it turned off for 
a little bit there. Could have been a testing error. So another thing I did, when I originally installed this, this little pre-filter came on and a couple times it kind of drifted or floated up in the tank and then it was sucking some water. So I wanted to find a way to weight it down. I took a little frag disc and I drilled a hole in it. I just punctured the tubing through, through it and did that. So it's like a perfect little weight, just dangles the end of the tube and always keeps it pointing downwards. So that was another really good kind of pro tip if someone's trying to figure out a good way to weight it down. Frag disc was a quick and easy solution for that. Now to actually hook this up to an aquarium controller, on the side of here there's a BNC1 and BNC2. So Alcatronic is coming out with another product called the Dosetronic which will, you could link up to this with a bunch of dosing heads so it can do all your dosing for you. So it can be a complete testing and dosing solution, which will be a pretty cool. Um, so for now, I don't know if I'll use one or two of those, but for now I have this one BNC port hooked up to the Neptune Apex. Okay, so now if you do want to hook this up to your aquarium controller, uh, you open the Alcatronic app, and at the bottom we go down to calibrate the little wrench, and you can say BNC and there's a seven and a 10. So you go into your aquarium controller, whether it's your Apex, your E-Core, your GHL, whatever it is, and you go to calibrate your pH probe. And when you do that, you hit the pH seven, and this is gonna mimic what it, a probe would read at pH seven solution. And then after that, you go to your next step and you do the pH 10, and that's gonna mimic what to do at pH 10. So this gives your aquarium controller the kind of the baseline of the two different ranges. Um, same thing is gonna be different depending on your controller, but then you can tell it what is your seven, your 10, and then the Elkatronic knows to put out the elk reading at whatever to fake it at that pH. Um, so I simply went into mine on the Apex and I just renamed that pH probe to elk. And now it's really easy. I can see my elk right on my dashboard. So I thought that was a really cool way to do it. And no matter what brand of aquarium controller you have, it's gonna be the same idea. So overall, I am really digging it so far. It's a super useful tool. If I know something happens to my tank, I can see those trend lines. If my alkalinity is starting to be consumed more or less, I know did something die, is stuff growing. It allows you to make those little tweaks to keep your tank stable. So if you guys want one of those thriving jam-packed SPS tanks, which a lot of people really want, the secret to it all is basically having a stable tank. Now it comes to more than just alkalinity, obviously. I mean, you have your lighting, your flow, and your water chemistry. But alkalinity is one of the major elements, and if you can keep that rock salt stable, it's a huge step into helping get you that thriving jam-packed reef tank. So it is an awesome tool that I think a lot of people would really appreciate. Now, my only one little gripe would be that it can be a little on the loud side. It's not bad, but you definitely hear it when it kicks on. Um, for me, it's a fair trade-off. I mean, it only does it every 12 hours, and one of them is when I'm sleeping usually, so I don't really even notice it. But at least, you know, your tank's being tested and I will happily trade the little bit of noise for the minute or so versus me having to walk out here and do a manual test every day. So fair trade. Um, so aside from that, I'm really digging it. Wiring up to an aquarium controller is pretty cool because you can could potentially take actions on your controller based on what your alkalinity level is at. Or aside from that, if you're just out and about, it's a quick, easy way to check it. Um, any control you have doesn't really matter to the brand. You can wire it up to the pH port through that BNC port, which is kind of a cool thing. My buddy Brad also has one on his tank, so I was over at his house a week or so ago. You've seen him in other videos. We had the Focustronic lights on his tank, which are the ones with the moving head on it. And so it was looking pretty good on his tank as well. He's doing a similar thing to me right now, where he's just doing it in monitoring mode. So eventually I asked him about if he's gonna go into letting dose for him. He says he probably will at some point. And the same thing, I think once I get the new tank, I may use it to kind of tweak it. I'll see how the calcium level reactor's going. If there's little swings, then I might use it to just stable those out and just keep it rock solid, dead stable. And hopefully I turn that into a nice, beautiful, thriving tank upgrade. It's kind of fun. Um, I'm sure you guys probably have more questions on this. And if you do, as always, let me know in the comments below and I will respond to them or answer them in a future update. Aside from that, if you enjoyed it, smash that like button. If you want to get some cool reefing shirts, check out reefdudes.com shop. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Thank you.